Joining us now from Perth in Australia is Kobus van der Vat, founder and CEO of Access Group. His talk will be, his talk will look at revisiting strategic choices and practical issues in global procurement and supply. Discussing some of the new issues, risks and choices for organizations and teams that manage exposure to international markets in their procurement and supply chain. So Kobus, over to you. Thank you, Rob, for that introduction. And I um, am first of all saying, uh, it's really good to be here to share some perspectives on this topic. Thank you to the organizers for inviting me. I hope that you can hear me clearly and see me clearly. So uh, this is going to be a very brief session on the topic of shifting global supply chains, especially in the context of a COVID environment, and then really zoning in on some of the strategic choices and practical considerations that are now very relevant in global procurement and supply. So it's a very big topic uh, in a short segment, but I think we can at least draw out some salient points. So our perspective is that Access Group is a business that provides market access for our clients. We have a global procurement and supply business, and we have sourcing offices in places like Beijing, Shanghai, Singapore, Perth, Bangkok, Mumbai, as of late last year, Dubai, Johannesburg, and other, a few other dots on the global map. We also have an international market expansion business and a cross-border corporate advisory business. So really focusing on making global markets be connected for our clients. And specifically in our global procurement and supply, the areas that we focus on is doing integrated sourcing and supply in a global context, providing global procurement services, sometimes focusing in on uh, capital projects uh, specifically, where there's often significant risk and significant complexity, and then some professional resourcing uh, services. So to set the scene, if we think of what happened over the last nine months, the world suddenly became very small. In fact, everyone clearly became connected. So when we ask this question of what about global procurement and supply, key questions come into play. For example, why would you do global procurement if you are so fragile and vulnerable in the global context as was clearly proven in the last several months? Where would you procure? What would you procure in terms of your spend basket from global markets? And what would you rather, uh, you know, uh, in terms of a, 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 a buyer's procure in a local uh, market? And of course, how would you go about that? And meanwhile, big questions like make versus buy, which, mark, which models, which countries, which suppliers, which engagement models will be features of the uh, background. So I've structured this really just very quickly, a few points on shifts in trade, the risk context and the challenges that it throws up, strategic imperatives at top management, senior management level, and then for practitioners day to day, what are some of the practical things to remind ourselves of, of and then a few final um, uh, words. So firstly, it is very clear from 1990 to where we are now that the global exporters, so those kind of changed. We've seen China from about number 20 in 1990 to being the top exporter in the world. Meanwhile, we've seen countries like the United States stay near the top. Um, and then we've also seen some countries like, for example, the UK drop down in the ranks somewhat. Some countries like Vietnam, India, um, certainly Mexico have come up in recent years. And there's a lot of dynamics and dynamism and it is clear that we're in um, an environment where, for example, the US, which in 1998 was effectively everyone's number one trading partner, has become a rival to countries such as China in particular by 2018, where you can clearly see how China has started to take market share in terms of being a counterpart in global trade. This is, of course, a very long term trend. But specifically what happened even in the last few months. So we can see that say in the third quarter of 2020, most countries that you can think of from Russia, the US, Australia, 
Argentina, India, South Africa, all the way through there to Malaysia, have seen large contractions in exports. But some countries have seen a positive uh, growth in exports. So clearly there is a re-ranking taking place. And if you do a deep dive in export statistics and, of course, procurement managers um, just talked before this session about using data and strategic intelligence, and it is clear that we're in a very dynamic um, global context. And more specifically, if we look, say, for countries such as the UAE or Saudi Arabia, we've seen a very significant change in the growth of uh, which countries have um, seen an increase in how much they export, say, into the UAE and Saudi Arabia over the last, say, 10 years. And if you look at the total um, exports of the top uh, 30 global exporters over the last decade, on the left there, you can see that some countries have, have registered growth on a CAGR basis as high as 5% in the case of Mexico, India 5%. We've seen certainly Poland, very significant growth. So clearly for us as procurement managers and, and people you know, working in the field of supply chain, it is dynamic. And the context at the end of last year where we had a, a US-China trade war, uh, troubled economics in the EU generally, Brexit, many other uncertainties, um, we've now had an overlay of COVID and its ramifications creating even more turbulence in terms of who are the winners and losers in uh, exports and imports. And what it means for, for countries such as the UAE, for example, you can see that in the top 100 imports, all of those colored uh, in different bright colors as opposed to the boring dull gray colors are the products where we can expect that the import origin countries are going to be very, very dynamic over the next five to 10 years. And if we hold the same up for, for, for Saudi Arabia, the same, many, many countries are falling off the table in terms of being export competitive and hence less sourcing will take place, whereas other new players are coming into the picture. So all of that was really just to say the world of trade is changing. Supply chains are realigning and procurement managers and supply chain managers are very much the ones driving this and therefore we need to be at the top of our game. So what has happened over the last few months? The world of risk has completely and fundamentally changed. At the end of last year, we had the trade war, environmental issues, we had um, uh, you know, cyber um, uh, security issues, a whole stack of risks to manage. Come 2020 in January, of course, COVID unfolded. And since then, we've seen the first and the second and the third order effects of that plus the economic fallout and the economic tremors and even geopolitical quakes that have set in. We are still grappling with what all of that means right now. And next and further out, we will see an amalgamation of all these different tiers of risks and we need to cope in that environment as professionals. We need to ask questions, how can we cope? How can we adjust? How much worse will it get? will it get? How, when will it get better? And what will that correction look like? And further out, what will be the lingering and lasting tectonic shifts? And how will we readjust to that future new environment? So really, it's a question of will a piece of string stretch or will it snap? What will correct to where we were last year? Will airlines and will the aviation industry correct? Will hospitality correct? Or will we see an aftermath of 2020 where some industries and some parts of upstream or downstream value chains simply never go back or at least not in the foreseeable future to where they were last year and then we need to think as practitioners uh, we need to think differently we need to think differently about the way we do things the way we live the way we work the way that we consume and of course our suppliers and our clients and our customers so that means that when we think of the, the context of risk and the challenges that it throws up, that key lessons have to be learned around the fact that, for example, black swans do exist. We had an interesting talk this morning about BCPs. Clearly, it shouldn't be something in a drawer with the key locked and the key perhaps no one can find it. 
We need to understand that black swans do exist and we need to plan for that. We need to have um, uh, tested methods and methodologies and practices and procedures in place. We also need to get the basics exactly right. We can't tinker with the basics when things start to happen. We need to be worried about the higher order issues, not the basics. We need to fully appreciate the interconnectedness of things and we need to have an absolutely holistic view of the world. And of course, rethink some of our old habits. In terms of new thinking, we need to have a dictum that preempt and anticipate. Think globally, everything is connected. And of course, we need to have full and complete 2020 visibility of our supply chain, of our suppliers and even their suppliers. And we need to think very carefully when we say mitigation costs are too high. Are they really too high or can you actually, in fact, not afford to not pay those costs in order to be in good shape when things go wrong? And ultimately, we need to make sure that an organizational culture exists to deal with risks and deal with the challenges. So what does that mean for the boardroom in terms of strategic imperatives? It certainly means that we need to think of supply chain and global procurement and supply as something that belongs at the top table. Information quality and speed is essential. The supply-based portfolio and the balance between global, local, regional, domestic, multi-domestic, international becomes super important. And the interface in the, in the, in the interlinkages between technology and people becomes super important. And of course, we can't all, you know, no one can do everything. So partnerships and collaborations become very important in mitigating um, you know, for the future that is unstable. In terms of practical considerations, clearly we need to engage with suppliers in a different way and also our customers. We need to think of logistics and supply chain uh, as being optimized at all times and the visibility upstream, downstream, across our value chain and supply chain from A to Z is a must. And of course it brings into play lots of practical things like revisiting inventory management and what constitutes or, or means or implies um, you know sufficient or necessary or minimum inventory levels it also means that we need to keep that balance between um, preserving resilience and managing cost let's not um, be um, uh, uh, penny wise but pound foolish and then finally we need to think about sustainable sourcing even in these difficult times and really then across the chain of activity from supply market assessments to um, supplier analysis, engagement and process management, there are certain bubbles that you can see and you need to find your focus. Where are you most vulnerable? Is it analytics? Is it strategy? Is it people? Is it, can you manage complexity? Can you manage negotiations across regions, across languages, across distances? And can you do it at speed when you need to do supplier discovery very quickly, as we've seen some had to do over the last few months? Doing contract management with multiple sources um, of supply. For example, so many people have in the last six or nine months realized they may be overexposed to certain markets, uh, China being a case in point. How to diversify, how to get the balance right and then do supplier performance and supplier development in all these different new um, markets and doing things like quality management when you can't even travel to visit your supplier and international freight management when there are bottlenecks in shipping and air freight. All of these things, you need to find what is really your killer's heel and needs to be your focus. So really um, getting global sourcing right means you need to be the expert in so many different areas at one time, simultaneously, all the time. And this is a big ask. So um, with my time coming to an end, I'm just going to make a few final points. One, global supply chains are realigning. That is clear. Trade patterns show it clearly. Geopolitics, geostrategy, COVID, local, global considerations, all of this rolls up into a clear fact that global supply chains are realigning. It also means there is more risk and that necessitates better risk management. There is no excuse. And in the end, the single biggest dif dif differentiator to get that right is leadership at all levels of the organization, but from the top and information, digital and tech, people and teams, 
the supplier mix, partnerships and collaboration, a close second after leadership. And in the end, at a practical level, there are still much to mention, but it's about the right things right. And of course, not just thinking and planning and strategizing, but actually during implementation. So with that, I'm going to pause and just say thank you very much for having been invited. I'm going to leave this presentation for anyone that wanted to um, look at it. There's about 40 slides here. I've covered about 15, but there's perhaps a little bit more richness in some of the other um, slides for anyone curious about some of our thoughts uh, in terms of this topic. Thank you very much.